my name is Maiken Poulsen and I'm a geologist and I work for the Geological Survey of Denmark and Greenland. GEOS has the slogan, it's knowledge for life, and they have five programs that they um, work on. It's the water and energy and minerals and nature and climate and also data banks. Um, and GEOS uh, is the Geological Survey of Denmark and Greenland, and it's a Danish research and advi advisory institution under the Danish Ministry of Climate, Energy and Building. Um, its main building is located in Copenhagen and has smaller offices in Aarhus, uh, in Jutland, and in Nuuk. Uh, in Aarhus, they have about 20 people sitting, and in Nuuk, we are only two. Um, there's a total of about 350 full-time specialist uh, technicians and ad administrative staff. Approximately 200 hold PhD or master degree. Um, and they cover most scientific, uh, geoscientific disciplines and activities. Mm -hmm. um, and the five programs, as I said earlier, mineral resources, energy resources, wa water resources, nature and climate, and data banks. Um, they have a lot of international collaborative partners and also um, the government of Greenland. Uh, and GEOS has um, geological experience with Greenland for more than 150 years. And then some facts about Greenland. Um, uh, Greenland is situated very close to the North Pole, and the white, I uh, don't know if you can point with this, yes, here, um, the white country up there. Uh, from north to south, Co the coordinates are from 83 to uh, 59 degrees north, and it, the kilometer-wise, it's uh, almost 2, 000, uh, over 2,000 kilometers from north to south, and 1,000 kilometers uh, wide. Uh, the total coastline is 44,000 4, kilometers, and the total area is very big, over 2 million square kilometers. <coughs> So if you put Greenland on top of Europe, it pretty much covers all of Europe. It's the 12th largest nation. <laughs> and it has an ice sheet in the middle, uh, which is 3.4 kilometers in the middle, and has the world's largest freshwater reserve. But if you remove the ice, um, the ice-free area is over 400,000 square kilometers, and so it's still larger than Finland, Germany, Poland, and Norway. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, compared to Australia, it's uh, three times smaller than Australia, and compared to Austria, the ice-free part is still four and a half times bigger. <laughs> There's only about um, 57,000 inhabitants, so it's not many. Um, a total about uh, 76 towns and settlements, and it's still in, it's the world's largest island. Um, and the income is mainly by fishery and block grant, um, which you can see up here. The block grant is quite big; it's from Denmark. And then you have um, uh, the mineral resources is only two percent. Um, yeah, Greenland is part of the Danish Kingdom, where the main language is Greenlandic and Danish. And it was governed as a Danish colony since 1721, but got home rule in 1979. Uh, and in 2009, the home took the right to possess and exploit mineral resources in the underground of Greenland. Um, Yes, and in the Mining Act, the government of Greenland State Geos may conduct research of special relevance to mineral resource explo exploration in Greenland and to the extent and as long as the research is conducted to meet the government's obligations to make such re research available to the government. So Geos is the um, uh, geological survey of Greenland. Yeah, just a few photos. Um, so the towns are very small, um, and there's no roads between the towns, and maybe you can see there's no um, trees also, and uh, the way to get around is by boat or by helicopter. Um, and the photo here, uh, it's from fieldwork last year, fieldwork, and actually you can 
pretty much see the geology on the surface because there's some places there's no vegetation at all. Um, and we also try to do a bit of outreach in Greenland to some of the young people in Greenland with the new office. Um, this is a list of some of the discoveries and mines in Greenland. Um, I'm not going to go through all of them, but the, one that, the ones that are highlighted, um, I will uh, talk about. There's a, um, in 1856, there was mining of cryolite in Ivedud uh, in South Greenland, and it, this mine was very um, productive, and it was... Uh, but it was a private company that was there and it was open for almost 150 years. And the cryolite was used for uh, aluminium, um, especially on the Second World War. And they got a very good profit of this, but uh, it didn't go directly to Greenland. Um, the company used some of the money for exploration in Greenland, so we got it back in that way. And um, in '56, there was also a mining uh, of lead and zinc in East Greenland, in Mestersvi. And uh, in 1973, also lead and zinc in Black Angel Mine in West Greenland. Uh, but these, these are all closed now. Um, and then in 2003, um, there was mining at uh, Nellonak Gold Mine in South Greenland. Um, and then also an olive oil mine in uh, West Greenland. But at the, the current stages is there's no mining. Um, and then a bit about the geology of Greenland. Um, yeah, the Earth, as you may know, is 4.6 billion years. So, and the oldest rocks in Greenland are 3.8 billion years. And all the colored parts on this map um, are uh, older than 1.6 billion years. Um, so Greenland is pretty old. Um, and it can be divided into different geological units that have evolved through time. This is a very schematic uh, map uh, showing the, the major uh, areas. Um, the orange part here is the really old part of Greenland. That's the craton. Um, that's so you have some areas that are up to 3.8, but um, the major part is about 3.1 to uh, 2.6 billion years. Um, and then you have all the yellow area, which are old mountain chains. Uh, uh, they are about 1.8 billion years. And formation in South Greenland, also up here and in West Greenland which are about two billion years. So, and then all the white areas um, here and up here, the sedimentary basins, uh, um, are younger than 1.6 billion years. And this is um, the same map, but where they have uh, tried to uh, extract the uh, inland ice and to see how the geology would look if you remove the ice. So they have um, looked at the geology here and the geology on the other side, and then it must be kind of the same in the middle. <laughs> so, um, and then there's also a map showing um, correlations to Canada. Um, some of the rocks are very similar on the Canadian and Alaskan side. <clears throat> yes, Greenland is very old, and because of this, you have had many different time periods where you have different events coming. Uh, yeah, the different geological environments have different potential for metals, and you probably know this. Uh, so we have these sedimentary basins, continental rift zones, flood basalts, uh, seafloor spreading, uh, origins, and also uh, island arcs. And all of these environments, they come with a certain, um, what do you say, um, type of um, chemicals, uh, minerals, sorry. Um, Greenland has also um, moved a lot <laughs> with the plates. 
And this has also influenced the way Greenland looks today. Um, here, for instance, that's um, uh, where Greenland started to break up uh, from uh, the North Atlantic. Uh, the North Atlantic Ocean started to open here, and you had lots of volcanism on both sides of Greenland. Uh, and also here, um, that's where Iceland began to also uh, appear. But that's uh, where it is kind of situated today. Um, then the really old part of Greenland, that's the Archean basement. Um, this is the capital, Nuuk. Um, you can see it on the map here. Um, the really old part is all the way into the inland ice. It's called uh, Isua or Isukasia terrain. And um, the oldest part is also consists of small continents. And all of these have different ages. And they were put together around uh, 2.7 billion years. And it's um, so it's been very dynamic. Um, And um, you can see here a major structure going all the way up here. It's a fault. And along this fault, you can also find gold. In, um, yeah. It's the Achaean basement. It's the craton. It's a stable block in the basement, which has been almost unaffected by later events in the geological history. And it's part of the North Atlantic craton. And the ma majority of the rocks are these uh, gneissic rock and uh, also the amphibolites, the old um, uh, basalts. And then I mentioned the really old part of uh, Greenland, which is the Isua greenstone belt. Um, it's these uh, banded iron formation, but also a quartzite uh, that's been um, dated to these 3.8 billion years. And then further south, we have the Fiskenesa complex. Um, it's about 2.9 billion years. And this contains uh, rubies and chromite. Um, you can see the dark uh, rocks here. They are full of chromite. And these are the anorthosite and also met metagabro. And then you have the rubies. Um, actually, it's a quite a big area where you have more than 40 localities with rubies uh, and also sapphires. Then further north, um, a bit north of Nuuk, you have a giant, um, what's believed to be an impact crater, about 3 billion years old. It's the oldest and deepest crater structure in the world. <coughs> Some have compared it also to um, the Sudbury in, in Canada, where you have this also a very big uh, crater. Um, and it's totally melt, melted and crushed rocks and has really high nickel concentrations. And you also have carbonatites, um, and some of these can also carry diamonds. So you have some companies looking for nickel in this area. Uh, further north, <coughs> north of Nuuk, um, you had this, um, the yellow area, it's, um, it started with rifting, um, and then you had opening of sea, and then later on it started to collide again, and you had mountain building. <coughs> and these areas, you also find um, kimberlites, and these are some of them have carry diamonds, and some of them are very similar to the ones also on the Canadian side. Um, then in, we moved to South Greenland, so we are moving towards um, from old towards uh, younger. Um, then we have the Ketelidian mountain range, and it was actually a subduction. Um, it was a collision, and then you had subduction, a bit like the Andes, um, where you had um, the old craton up here, and uh, then it evolved from this border zone, and you started having granites formed in, in very deep, uh, in the deep crust, and they are exposed on the surface today. 
but then uh, this um, big mountain chain would erode um, and you would get sand and silt uh, and clay uh, further south and as the subduction continued you would get uh, these zones uh, and they are now also exposed on the surface and you have in the end, Rabakivi granites also forming in deep. And the, the, this picture is one of the Rabakivi granites, and it's from uh, the Nalunak uh, gold mine area. You can actually see the road, I think, here. Yeah. Um, yeah, you had a gold ore in, yeah, in uh, South Greenland. Um, that was, I mentioned it before. Um, it was open from 2003 to December 2013. Um, <clears throat> it was an underground mine, and they extracted more than uh, 9.8 tons gold um, and really high concentration of gold um, in the ore. Uh, this is an old photo. Um, I think they went up to about 800 meters level uh, when, when they stopped the mine. And then still in South Greenland, but a bit further north, you had an other type of event. That was a rifting event in the Garda period. Um, it's the period 1.3 to 1.1 billion years. Um, here you had, um, in the early Garda, you had some intrusion forming um, and, and also sandstone. Um, and then in the mid garda you had more um, dikes coming in, volcanic dikes, and the Ividud cryolite uh, was formed here. Um, and then in the late garda you had more uh, intrusions coming in, and also dikes with a different direction than before. And this Ilimausa I will talk to, uh, tell you about uh, more uh, later. Um, and also a big mountain range in, in East Greenland. I would uh, surely uh, mention this. This is the Caledonian um, fold belt. And it's, you have this um, opposite side in Scandinavia. It was a collision with, um, yeah, with the Scandinavia. The, the photo here is, is not from um, the Caledonian, but it's, uh, it's a bit older than the Caledonian. And then you had the Paleogene volcanism uh, was, was caused by this hotspot underneath uh, Greenland about 65 million years ago. It started in West Greenland in the Disco area and then continued in East Greenland. Um, and you have many uh, intrusions also related to this event. Um, yeah, the hotspot is situated underneath Iceland today. And here is a photo of uh, some of the flood basalts in East Greenland. And each of these uh, stripes is a layer of flood basalts. And it, I think this is about two kilometers uh, wide, yeah. Uh, a bit about the mineral resources in Greenland. You can see our camp down here, <laughs> very small. Um, yes, uh, there, there are... The deposits in Greenland, um, they have quite uh, big deposits in Greenland. Um, we have tried to plot uh, some of the um, uh, major deposits in the world together with some of the uh, deposits in Greenland. He here's the Isua iron uh, close to Nuuk. Um, it has about 30% iron, and but a really high grade uh, tonnage um, iron. Um, and also the sink. Uh, this is Citronen Fjord in northeast Greenland. Um, has fairly high also a sink grade and also very high tonnage. And these are some of the current projects. There are quite a lot of projects in Greenland. Um, yeah, these, but it's an, only a selection of the more advanced uh, projects, and it changes every year. Um, at the moment, there are about 138 mineral exploration licenses, and these are mostly junior companies. Uh, the, the companies come from Canada, Australia, and Great Britain. That's the, the majority. And as I said, there's no mines at the present. 
um, the Israel Iron, um, they, was grant, they were granted the exploitation license in 2014, and it's a very big project. Um, but they needed uh, money for this, so um, they, are, they haven't started. And as this, the, the new thing is, uh, a new company took over in, uh, this year, and we don't know what will happen. Um, I think they're still waiting for this four billion years, uh, four billion, <laughs> sorry, four billion <laughs> Danish crowns to, uh, to open. And <clears throat> the other project is the Fiskenes of Rupi project. Uh, they were granted uh, in 2014. Um, and it's a fairly small operation, only about uh, 50, uh, uh, sorry, 80 employees. Um, but they have already started to construct a mine, and I think they are positive in they will open the mine maybe this year or late this year. Um, sorry. And just a bit about what we uh, we do at it gives we we are helping the we are assisting the government of Greenland with. Uh, some of the work, and we are doing finger, geochemical fin fingerprinting on the geo Greenlandic rubies. And this we do um, because we know, we want to know how they look like compared to other occurrences in the world. Uh, and this is really important, especially if they want to try to control um, the rubies if they're going out of the country and coming back again. They want to make sure that it's a Greenlandic ruby. And, um, and then these are some of the other projects which are, they are still have the license, but um, uh, they have stopped. Uh, they haven't uh, moved ahead. Black Angel, Let's Sink, they got their exploitation license in 2010, and they still, uh, they, they need capital to um, to go on. So, and then you have the Serri Olivine Mine. Um, they closed in 2009. And I don't know if they will give up their license to someone else. Um, then we have Malmbia Mulabdenum. Um, they got the license in 2008, and they were waiting for market improvement uh, because of the Mulabdenum prices they fell uh, just before they started. And then the Nellonek gold mine they also closed, um, but there are still gold to be find, found there. And then you, we have some other projects which are um, moving ahead. This is the White Mountain uh, Anorthosite, a really pure um, uh, feldspar. Um, and I think they also um, they will give up, uh, submit the ap application very soon, or if not, if they haven't done it already. Um, and then we have the Citrone Fjord sink and lead in northeast Greenland. Um, this is a very big deposit of sink and lead, but it's very high in the Arctic, um, so it's uh, it will be a challenge. But um, but it's a really world class deposit. And then we have two in South Greenland in the same area as the intrusion I showed you before, the Ilimausa in South Greenland. It's uh, Kvænefjell in the north, and then Kringlerne in the south. Uh, yeah, this is a photo showing um, some from the Ilimausak intrusion in, in the north. In the Kvænefjell area, you can see a car here, and it's the road up towards an old test mine for uranium. Um, so here is a map of the intrusion. So you have the fjord here, uh, you can see it, it's here. Uh, the intrusion goes um, across the fjord. Um, so you have the one project in the south and one project in the north. So the one in the north contains uh, uranium and more rare, uh, uh, light rare earth. Um, and then in the one in the south contains more heavy uh, rare earths. Yeah, this was a magma chamber that was originally buried about two to five kilometers in the continental crust, but now it's also exposed on the surface. And it has over 200 different minerals, really rare minerals, where 30 of these have first been described here, 
and 12 have only been found in Ilimausa. And some other projects which are um, moving ahead. Um, as I mentioned, the North American nickel, looking for nickel in, in the old um, uh, meteor crater, or uh, the area about, yeah. And there's potential for more. Um, I don't want, go, don't want to go into detail about these, but um, Greenland is still very underexplored, so there's still so much to find in, in Greenland. Um, and then GEOS have tried to um, <coughs> look at, EU has looked at some of the critical elements um, which they see as critical, and we have, and, and GEOS has tried to look at these elements uh, in Greenland, and a lot of them can be found in Greenland in very high uh, concentrations. Uh, they have not concentration potential. You um, can see beryllium and graphite, molybdenum, ni niobium, and rare earth, and tantalum and vanadium has very high potential in Greenland. And now I'm finishing off. Um, Geos has a really good homepage. Uh, you can go in and have a look, and there's uh, especially the one with data and maps. If you click onto that, there's a lot of information to find there. Also some um, interactive, interactive maps where you can look at uh, the geology and um, and also a lot of um, uh, newsletters and you can find in there. And um, also books if you want to order books. And also the government of Greenland also has a really good uh, homepage where you can find information about all the licensing in Greenland and the companies. Um, yeah, that's it.